Hello everyone, I'm your hostess with the mostest 8 second gaming and in today's video we are going to be talking about the Season 20 Split 2 Legend tier list. There have been a couple changes with the Legends moving them up and down in the tiers so let's talk about those today. But just quickly, if you guys are looking to take your Apex skill to the next level then you have to check out the Game Leap website right now. Over there, we have hundreds of video guides going over legend guides, gun guides, VOD reviews, and much more. Because there are literally thousands of different situations that you can find yourself in Apex, and we want to help you no matter what those situations are. Our top level coaches are constantly thinking of new guides to put on the website to help you guys, so please click the link in the description, pick yourself up a membership, and start to improve today. But okay, with that out of the way, let's hop back into the tier list, and to start things off, we have to talk about the D tier, because the D tier is the bottom and there are still just two legends find themselves down here it is lifeline and mirage like normal now lifeline did go through a little bit of a patch where she was super scary because of the ability to call in a care package and get a weapon out of that very easily now that was super strong but they did nerf that they took it away and then they actually ended up nerfing care packages as a whole so once again, Lifeline's usefulness does fall back down into the D tier because as a character, she really isn't that strong. You're not going to want to take her in the support role over other characters like Gibraltar or Caustic who are in such good positions right now. She doesn't really fit the role in the team that she's supposed to fit. She's a support character. She's supposed to be holding down the back line. But unless your teammates are going down, then she doesn't really have a ton of usefulness. Yes, her care package does have some smart loot built into it, but so does the support pins that you could just find around the map. Without the weapon in her care package, she isn't really that strong, so she's staying in the D tier. The other legend finding themselves down here is Mirage like normal. Mirage is just a bad character. He can be cool, he can pull off some interesting plays, but overall his usefulness to a team is next to zero. He doesn't fit any of the roles that a team needs. He's not an entry fragger, he's not a secondary fragger, and he's not a support. He's kind of in a weird limbo position between secondary fragger and support, but he doesn't really actually fit any of the roles, so if you're picking him over somebody else, you're taking away a role from the team and that is not a good thing to do. On top of that, Mirage does have a few different ways that you can counter him if you actually know what you're looking for. So in a fight, he's actually really easy to track which one the real one is and once you get above like Platinum, then people are going to start understanding what to look for and his usefulness falls off exponentially. He's only really good if you actually are in a rank where people panic in fights and once you start climbing the rank, that is less often. So he's just not a good character, D tier he's going to stay. But now we can move into the next tier and that is going to be the C tier and there are four legends finding themselves here. We've got Ballistic, Fuse, Octane, and Seer. Now starting off with Ballistic, he's another one that doesn't really fit a role in the team. He is basically a secondary fragger, but again, you're not going to want to pick him over a different secondary fragger. He's somewhat good at being aggressive, but it's not to the point where you want him over another legend. You'd rather have something like a Revenant or a Horizon or even a Bloodhound as a secondary fragger if you're going to be aggressive. And yeah, the unlimited ammo from his ultimate is nice, but again, it's just not worth picking him up. And the only reason that he's in C tier is because the ultimate giving his team the entire boost is very nice in a lot of different situations but it's not amazing in those situations it's just nice so that is why he's in the c tier next up though we have fuse and fuse is a character that has so much potential but it's just not in the right meta i know some people don't like it when i say it but fights are super death bally right now teams do not like to stay in the same spot so fuse's usefulness really falls off so hard because of that what fuse wants wants to do is wait for teams to try and set up somewhere and make it so that they can't play that. They want to take away spots for you to sit. But in fights, you're not really sitting anywhere anyway. You're trying to get an opening. You're trying to death ball with your team. You're trying to run at people. And when it comes to Fuse's mother load, it does have a lot of potential. I can see it being good in a different meta. But right now, there are so many different legends that are in the meta that have a way to get out of it themselves. They have a movement ability to just get out of the fire and not be an issue. And on top of that, the fire does not activate fast enough. If you have good enough reflexes, you can just run out before the fire actually turns on and be perfectly safe. 
hey, Fuse has amazing potential and I can definitely see him skyrocketing up the tiers in a different meta if we do see some changes, but right now he is C tier. And the next legend we gotta talk about is Octane. And Octane is down here for one simple reason. He is a selfish legend. Can he be good? Absolutely. If you are one of the 0.00001% of the community that knows how to do the movement techniques. But other than people like Stormin or Lemonhead or people like that that are absolutely ridiculously Adderalled out and can do those movement techniques, you're not going to be getting the same usefulness out of Octane. And like I said, he's a selfish legend, so he's not really helping your team. Yeah, the jump pad can help your team, but nine times out of ten, the Octane is just using it for their own selfish needs rather than the good of the team. And when you actually do need it, he probably doesn't have it because he wasted it going five feet to the right. Octane's playstyle is a very selfish playstyle, and it does work for some people like I have mentioned, but for the majority of the people, it's not good for an actual team comp, and that is why he's in C tier. And the last one in C tier is going to be Seer. Now, Seer is another legend that does have a little bit of potential to move up. There were a couple seasons where he was an absolute must on the team, and if you didn't pick him, you were essentially trolling. Respawn hit him with a couple nerfs, but now with the perk system, they basically reverted those nerfs, and you are back to being as strong as you once were. Were. But the meta has kind of shifted once again, and Seer isn't as strong as he can be in a lot of different situations. But if you find yourself in the perfect situation for Seer, he is incredibly strong. But that is why I have him in C tier, because you have to be finding yourself in the right situation time after time after time. And if you and your team are not built around getting yourself into those perfect situations, or they're not happening for the game, he is not actually that good. He could definitely move into B or even potentially A tier if we see another buff or a change in the meta, but for right now, I think he's good in the C tier. But now we can move into the next tier, which is the B tier, and there are five legends fighting themselves here. We've got Catalyst, Ash, Loba, Rampart, and Vantage. Now, first off with Catalyst, she's another legend that was just an absolute powerhouse, and you saw her everywhere. But with some of the nerfs that did come out to Catalyst, she isn't as good as she once was. And yes, the perk system is another one of those things that did kind of basically revert some of the nerfs that were done to her. But with those perks, you have to choose one or the other when it comes to the different nerfs. So it doesn't bring her back to the spot that she once was. It is better for her, but not to the point where she's an absolute powerhouse pick. She is still good, don't get me wrong. That's why she's in the B tier, because she is a middle of the pack legend. She's not broken, but she's also not bad either. If you want to play her, she can still do what she's meant to do. She can still funnel team, she can still cut off line of sight, she can still lock some areas down. She is still a decent pick, but not anything above the B tier in my opinion. And next up we have Ash, another legend that is just all over the place because Ash is either really good or really bad, but right now I think she's kind of found a middle ground with some of the perks that she has gotten. Her ability to track teams after they finish a fight is pretty strong because if you know where teams are going, then you can start to play around that a lot more. And I do think that the recon passive is a little bit stronger than Ash's because Ash only targets one specific team, but you can also see where death boxes are popping up on the map so you can see where areas are hot and which areas are cold so you can plan rotations based off of that. It also helps you for third partying because when you see a team dying that's close to you, the recon beacon doesn't get scanned so the enemy team doesn't get the warning and you're able to roll up a little bit quieter. She does have some usefulness which is why I like her in the B tier because she's not overly broken, she's not anything above B tier but she's not bad right now she does have some usefulness so that is why i'm putting her here now next up we have loba and again loba is one of the legends that definitely has been up higher in the tiers a lot more often but right now it just doesn't seem like she is a must pick on the team i don't exactly know what respawn did in the game it kind of feels like the armor changes have affected loba a little bit but in the last couple seasons i used to be a pretty big loba fan putting her pretty high in the tiers and even sometimes in s tier but after testing her out in game it just doesn't feel like she has that edge anymore more and it just doesn't feel the same. The meta definitely has shifted away from Loba and made her a little bit less useful and that is why I kind of feel like she's more of a middle tier legend right now. This is definitely one that could go up a lot easier but right now I just don't think that the meta is in a good spot for her and that's why I'm putting her in the B tier. Now next up we have Rampart and this is one that actually has been moving up in the tiers. Before I was putting her in D tier, C tier because things weren't really working out for her the way that she would want them to. But with the meta shifting a little bit 
more towards playing for Endgame, Rampart is a little bit better because she's finally getting to do what she wants to do, which is just setting up a building and waiting for people to run in front of her walls. If you are actually able to set up as a Rampart, she can be scary, but most of the time before, Rampart wasn't able to set up because fights were way too fast, so she was getting knocked out way too quickly before she was actually able to get her stuff put out. But now, with people playing for more placement every now and then and people being a little bit more hesitant to fight, she actually does get some time to set up a building, play around her walls, and just give her team that opportunity to just burst somebody down without them even realizing. Which is why I have moved her into the B tier. And the last legend in the B tier is Vantage. Now with the perk system, Vantage did get a really nice quality of life change to her, and she's able to be a lot more annoying now with her sniper rifle. The sniper is stupidly strong, and once you're able to actually learn how the bullets work and figure out that they're a little bit larger than other projectiles, you can start to cause some serious havoc with it. You are able to snag so many free kills from fights that are hundreds of meters away from people that you should not have any business snagging kills from. And griefing fights is one of the best things to do on Vantage because it's just just free kills waiting for you to take them. Now, if Vantage's sniper rifle was not as strong as it is, then I definitely think that she would be a little bit lower in the tiers because she doesn't actually fit a role on the team like Mirage or Lifeline. But because the sniper rifle is one of the strongest weapons in the game, she does move up into a different tier because she does have that backline capability. She can fit into the support role and just be a backline anchor for your team. Now, you have to play her as that support character. You cannot play her as an aggressive character character you have to be playing around support but once you're able to do that and figure it out she is definitely a b tier legend so i think she fits really well in this tier moving forward though we can talk about the a tier and there are actually seven legends finding themselves in the a tier we've got bangalore conduit horizon mad maggie pathfinder revenant and Valkyrie. Now first off we have Bangalore because Bangalore did get hit with quite a few nerfs going into split 2 and it has taken her down a peg. She is still a good legend which is why she's in the A tier but she's not the S tier must pick on a team that she once was. She has been kind of like a powerhouse the last couple seasons and Respawn definitely needed to do something about it because her perks were just way too strong. Her ultimate was coming up way too fast. The ping system was just way too broken because you could play in your own smoke and have the digi threat essentially. She was a ridiculously strong legend and I'm glad that they did the nerfs because she still is good but she's not broken which I think all legends should be in that stage. I don't think we're ever going to have that phase where all legends are good but not broken but you know we can start to work towards it hopefully. But if you were a Bangalore player before don't be afraid to play her again she still is good you just have to be a little bit more careful when you're playing around your own smoke and once again be conscious of your alt cooldown because it's a little bit longer. But she is still a perfectly fine legend to play. And that is basically the same thing for our next legend which is Conduit. Conduit was so scary to fight against because she essentially just reset any damage that you did without paying any attention to it. You did a lot of opening damage to somebody and you're trying to push off of that, haha <laughs> JK there's a Conduit that was sitting in a corner that healed their teammate through a wall and now you are out of position because you thought that somebody was low and now your team lost the fight. But now with Conduit's healing being a little bit slower and it being able to be cancelled a lot easier, she does have a few weaknesses that you can play off of. Now that's not to say that she's completely out of the meta because she is still a very very good pick and if your team is trying to be aggressive she's probably a good go-to pick for your support role but she's not the fight resetter that she was which again is another push to a legend being strong but not broken that I am a huge fan of and that is why she's in the A tier. Now next up we have Horizon and this is one of the legends that definitely could be a little bit higher in the S tier potentially but I do think that Horizon has enough counters right now that she is not the S tier pick. Her gravity left I do think needs one more nerf to the accuracy because people are still able to beam you out of it, but other than that I do think she is in a good spot. Me personally I don't think the gravity lift should have any accuracy when you are inside of it. I don't think that it should be used as an aggressive tool, I think it should be used as a relocation tool. But right now she is still in a very good position because she can use the gravity lift aggressively, she can use her ultimate to win fights basically alone. She can do a lot of these things as a one man army and that is why she's in just a good position in the A tier right now. But again, the gravity lift can be shot off of, the gravity lift isn't 100% accurate, and her ultimate can be shot before it even goes off, so you have a lot of options to play around her. She's not stupidly broken, which is why she's not in the S tier, but she is strong, which is why she's in A tier, which is why I'm leaving her here. Now next up we have Mad Maggie, and Maggie is an A tier legend for the sole reason that she causes enough chaos, throw a ball to start a fight. You stun people, you throw thermite down, they're confused, they don't know what's going on, you run in, you shotgun them, you just cause a 
bunch of chaos, people are panicking, they don't know what to do, and you are able to take advantage of that perfectly. On top of that, you get some good opening damage to somebody and they go to try and heal, you just throw a riot drill, force them to move to somewhere else, and you've taken them out of the fight for that much longer, keeping things a 3v2 for an extended period of time, allowing you and your team to win the fight so easily. She's incredibly strong, and if you're looking for an aggressive legend, potentially try picking her up. But now for the next legends, I want to talk about Pathfinder and Revenant together because they're basically the same thing, just with different skins. Their whole game plan is taking hard, aggressive off angles to get opening damage, which they can either grapple or jump into, get the knock, reset, and then go back to safety. And one doesn't necessarily do it better than the other right now because Pathfinder's hitbox is big, but the grapple's a little bit more freedom, and Revenant has his ultimate, which essentially makes him a raid boss with how much armor he has, and if you pair that with a conduit, it's just, oh, it's so annoying. But they do the same job and they do it extremely well in this aggressive meta. Fights cannot take super long right now. If you draw them out, they're going to get third partied, fourth partied, fifth partied. But if you have a character like Revit or Pathfinder who is able to play off of a lot of damage and jump on top of somebody before they have the ability to react to it, they're going to get their reset on the knock, they're going to get the potential to get back out and get to safety, and you've just ended the fight essentially within a few seconds because the other team is now at such a disadvantage they either have to fight and die or run away and the fight is over no matter what. That is why I really like these two in the A tier and I think they're a very solid pick here, but that is why I'm going with them here and that's why I wanted to talk about them together. And the last legend in the A tier is Valkyrie. Now Valk did go through some phases where she wasn't the best pick, but with the legend perk system that did come out this season, she has gone back to being a pretty solid pickup. Her ultimate was slower, her ultimate didn't go as high, it just wasn't as good as it once was, and with the jump towers being released, she just wasn't a good pick. But now, with the perk system allowing her to go higher and stuff like that, she's gone back to being a semi-decent pickup. And if your team is looking to do hard rotations to zone, she is probably the number one option for that because you can school bus your entire team to an endgame position before anyone else, allowing you the option to set up a building, wait for the endgame, and be perfectly fine before anyone else is able to even realize where the zone is going. I think Valk's in a good position right now, that is why I think she's an A-tier legend, that's why I'm putting her here. But now we can move into the secretly broken tier. And these are legends that kind of fly under the radar. These are legends that people don't expect to be as strong as they are, so when they fight you, they underestimate you and you're able to get some sneaky kills. Now our two legends find themselves here this split. We've got Gibraltar and Crypto. Now I absolutely love Gibby. I think he's one of the most fun legends to play in the game solely because of his bubble. And that's also why I think he's in such a secretly broken tier right now because his bubble is back to being as good as it once was. And you can do some insanely aggressive plays with him while being so ridiculously safe because of the safety of the bubble. And once you play Gibraltar enough and really understand the intricacies of bubble fighting, there's almost never going to be a time that you lose them, giving you so much potential to rack up KP because people just don't understand bubble fighting right now. Back when Gibraltar was the absolute must pick on a team back in like season four, season five, something like that everyone knew how to bubble fight because everyone was running Gibraltar. But now with some of the wave of new players in the game and also people not really understanding Gibraltar because he hasn't been a meta for a while, they don't understand how to bubble fight. So if you're able to pull that off on somebody, that is going to be free kills for you and then free rank for you. I definitely think that over the course of the season, there are going to be a few more Gibbies popping up here and there. So be ahead of the curve and pick them up before anybody else does. And the last legend in this tier is Crypto. Now, Crypto absolutely loves this style of ranked, where you sit in a building, wait for endgame, and just play things out as they happen, because he's able to get so much more information than any other legend while being safe doing so. There's no other legend that can scout out buildings, scout out positions to play, potentially even grief teams with the damage that he can pump out with his EMP while not putting himself at risk. If other legends want to scan something, they really have to actually put themselves in risk to do so. The only legend that kind of can do that uh, safe as crypto is bloodhound but you're not going to get the same scan potential from bloodhound and once you get that extended emp range on crypto in an end game situation you're going to be hitting everybody and your team is just going to be able to clean up some easy kills because it doesn't matter if they have a gibraltar bubble it doesn't matter if they have a watson generator it doesn't matter what they have you are blowing it up with the emp so your team is just going to be able to do what they want seriously do not sleep on crypto this split check him out see how strong he is for yourself but now we can move into the s tier the cream of the crop the top ledge 
Legends, and there are five up here right now. We've got Bloodhound, Caustic, Newcastle, Watson, and Wraith. Now starting off, Bloodhound, it's pretty obvious. They're just super aggressive. They scan, they get information, they do what Bloodhound is doing. Bloodhound has been strong for a few seasons now. They've been S tier for such a long time, and even when they're not super strong in the meta, they are still pretty much an A tier legend. There's not a whole lot that Respawn can really do to Bloodhound to take them out of the meta because scans are always going to be strong. And on top of that, their ultimate, making them insanely fast, giving them the free digi threat. It's just ridiculous amounts of power built into one legend. And even though Bangalore isn't as meta as she once was, Bloodhound is still going to be strong because, again, scans are just strong. The information that Bloodhound can get to you in fights is second to none, so that is why they are an S tier legend. Now, next up, we have Caustic and Watson. I'm going to talk about them at the same time because, again, they're basically the same character with just different skins. They want to set up perimeters for you. They want to set up buildings. They want to get you a spot to play. And they have have different playstyles when doing so. Caustic is able to be a little bit more hands-free and control spaces that are a little bit more open, while Watson wants to set up buildings a little bit better and more closed spaces with her fences so that they don't get shot as easily and also make it so you can't be naded out. That is Caustic's biggest weakness is if people are just able to nade spam you, then you don't have any spots to play and the barrels are not as effective. But on the flip side, Watson isn't able to hold the same kind of spaces that Caustic is able to because her fences just get shot a lot easier. So when you're trying to pick which one of these legends you want on your team, you have to think about the spots that you're holding more often and what kind of situations you find yourself in. Right now, I definitely think that Caustic has a little bit of an edge over Watson because he has the ability to be more aggressive than Watson, but I definitely think they're both in an insanely strong position right now and you can replace one with the other depending on your playstyle. And next up, we have my boy Newcastle. This is one of the most slept on legends in the game because people just don't find him fun for some reason, but I like winning, so I personally think Newcastle is a lot of fun because Newcastle sets you up to win every single game. Newcastle is able to just completely flex to whatever your team wants to do. He can be aggressive. He can be defensive. He can give your team a spot to play. He can give your team time to breathe. It doesn't matter what your team is doing. Newcastle does it and he does it well. And like I mentioned before with Gibraltar, people don't really understand how to bubble fight and kind of Newcastle does have a way to bubble fight with his mobile shield. If you're able to spin it and move it while you are kind of fighting somebody, you're able to position it so you can play it and they can't play it. And it's just ridiculously strong and you can kind of outplay people so well with it. I'm going to keep saying it until people realize that Newcastle's an S tier legend. You got to pick him up if you like being an aggressive support legend. Seriously, try him. And the last legend we have is Wraith, the portal queen of the staple pick in Apex Legends. She's just here. Wraith has always been a strong legend. She's always going to be a very solid go to pick. And now with the legend perks giving her even stronger abilities, there's literally nowhere else to put her but the S tier. Her phase is almost instant, and I honestly really like Sixth Sense telling you if teams are walking up on you, because sometimes your team is not as observant as they need to be, or maybe you're solo queuing and your teammates are not trustworthy, so just don't rely on them and rely on yourself instead. There's not really a whole lot that I can say about Wraith that hasn't been said already. She's just an S tier legend. She can play split. She can play safe. She can do what she needs to do. She can get your team from point A to point B. She's just such a good pick, and that is why she's S tier. But let me know which legends you would switch around in the comments down below. And if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest Apex Legends tips, tricks, and news, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. Once again, I'm 8 Second Gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one.